you guys done chattering now so i can do the intro i mean you're just talking all <laughs> oh, my the bad. music i mean doing all these things over here so oh, we didn't just... mean to interrupt you sir <laughs> <laughs> Hey, there's, a, are you supposed to talk on a podcast? There, there's an order to this i don't know what y'all were saying though I, I heard music in my ears and then all of a sudden i heard y'all mumbling in the background so maybe the people uh dri driving their cars can hear what, what you guys are saying so welcome to mzbc the podcast for march the second oh it's my brother-in-law's birthday today i need to remember that because he'll listen and hear me say <laughs> you just did. I, need, I know <laughs> right. i need to remember that past this point right here and that's <laughs> That's well, happy birthday, brother-in-law. March the 2nd, 2023. Um, man, I told them before we started, you guys lead the way because I don't have a lot to talk about um, this week. After last... Email, you were in church on Sunday? Yeah, you were in church on Sunday because yeah, you talked to me afterwards. After last week's sermon, I was not sure if... Uh, um, I would still be here today. I thought people might take me out or something. You know, it was a little aggressive. <laughs> so I was like, I didn't know someone would come headhunting for me. But as always with God and the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, because I went up there, had to plan what I was going to say, and just the events of the morning led my heart to a different direction. And um, as the Holy Spirit always does, um, all good comments. Like, uh, just, you know, it's hard to be in that position. I don't know if you guys have experienced this, Mike, probably more than you, man, because you're a dad, that when you have to be the one that's, like, correcting. And, and the cool thing about being in my position is I'm not the one doing the correcting. It's God's word. And I was just like the voice for it. And I hate that because, uh, <laughs> man, you're the one like up there saying it. And like, right. if people examined your life, it would not match up to what you're saying because I'm just, I'm a sinner just like anyone. And, but when you're up there saying it, that's how you have to bring it. That's like what I'm called to do. And, you know, and I was, so I was going off of the stage, like, holy cow, I don't know um, how that's going to be accepted or, or, or received, <laughs> but good. So I was, I was yeah. super encouraged by I think God. you did a fantastic job <laughs> I, was say, I, th I think you did exactly what was what was necessary i mean sometimes well, you can't always be the fun parent right <laughs> I, I, well yeah that's what other always tells me <laughs> just like uh we were talking about something last night i forget what it was raising um our middle schooler and it was about like studying for a test or something and i was like that's just probably how every middle school boy <laughs> is i mean they're not worried about studying for tests she's like i know that but you got to tell him too like i can't be the only one telling <laughs> <laughs> whatever so i'm like okay i hear you so yeah i like to be the good parent i like to be the good cop all those kind of things i don't like to be the the bad guy it just doesn't it's just not my style i like to be liked by people and then when you're a leader uh, that's the worst leadership trait is to try to make everyone like you yeah. you, don't, <laughs> yeah. you don't get into a leadership position for everyone to like you that's, that's true. exactly right that's right because uh, people will talk about <clears throat> you know, something of that nature. I was like, well, Jesus, he didn't come down here to please people. <laughs> he never yeah. once said, I am here to please you. Yeah. He said, I came to do the will of him who sent me. He said, I didn't come for peace. I, I brought a sword. Yeah. And, and I yeah. think that I agree with everything. Now, you sword just... might be a little harsh. You might need to bring a whip or something. To no, well, <laughs> well <laughs> I don't know. They're both. Those are both pretty bad. I Got mean, ride, yeah, I don't know. They're yeah, they're all rough, dude. I was gonna say, I hear, I agree with everything you just said. That it is, um, Jesus came in, disrupting him and like swinging a sword. He wasn't trying to please people. But the and that can come across almost as divisive to someone that doesn't think the same way we do. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah. he, he, I don't know. It almost calls, sounds like well, if he's so good, why is he causing division? And what I'm always trying to think about and get people to, uh, I guess, just to even entertain the thought is that yeah, it will cause division if you are not aligned with like what he's talking about and. The direction he's trying to lead your life it will come across as division and you'll think that we're trying to say this or that and hypocrisy or whatever but um when you when you're doing the will of god as jesus was um it's going to cause division but you're also going to it's like when you're loving and, and correcting for the right reasons i guess is what i'm trying to say and you're leading and rubbing people the wrong way but for the right reasons um yeah. not just to be a jerk and there's everyone's probably had the boss that was a jerk just to be a jerk um, because they were in charge or whatever. And then we've also had the bosses like we've had um, 
that you've worked for at email, I won't say names on here, but that are super kind and are following Jesus. And yeah, there were moments <laughs> where I'm sure he had to correct people and like go off yeah. on them, but it was never out of anger. It was always out of, you know, I'm trying to make my business better. I'm trying to make you a better man. I'm trying to help you grow and all these things. And so that's the, that's the tricky part of, of leading, uh, not only in church though, I think, right, Mike, that's in every aspect of life. Um, leading is going to rub somebody the wrong way, but if you're doing it for the right oh, yeah. reason, Mike's looking down at some notes, so he's probably trying to find some. Oh, no, I've got this big book right here. I got a lot of notes in it. Right a here. Big book. <laughs> uh, Matthew 10 10 32. Matthew 10 32 says, Therefore, everyone who will acknowledge me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father in heaven. Don't assume that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I came to turn, and he's, he's quoting, I believe it's Malachi. MC is Malachi, I believe. Uh, a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be the members of his household. The person who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. The person who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever doesn't take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Anyone finding his life will lose it. And anyone losing his life because of me will find it. There's a lot going on right there. Yeah, that was, that was, a, that was an impactful uh, little passage right there. <laughs> a lot of... Uh... So if I was standing there and I just heard this guy dressed in a bed sheet say this to me, it's like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. He's not cool. We're gone. <laughs> so he's talking about, you know, cutting people up. Yeah. The um, You just read what I'm preaching on Sunday, but I'm not preaching out of Matthew. I'm preaching out of Luke, but the exact same thing. Um, basically, it boils down what he, I mean, the cost of discipleship is, is what the angle I'm going at it with, but I'm using the uh, Matthew, I mean, excuse me, Luke 9, uh, 23 to 25, and it's the scripture you just said in Matthew that said, um, if anyone wants to follow me, must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And then it goes on to say, uh, you know, like, let the dead bury the dead and let the <laughs> this one celebrate that and all these things. Like yeah. you, anyone that puts their hand on the plow and looks back is not worthy to follow me. And I'm like, woo. Heavy. Uh, Dang. Well, yeah. <laughs> Man, Jesus. <laughs> you are, bro. Yeah. I'm telling you, dude. And it's hard. And I, and that right there can, I like, we're laughing, but that is exactly what turns an unbeliever away, right? Like, you hear all that and you're like, man. I, I think just to kind of put it in a nutshell without getting too deep, is he wants God to be first. Mm hmm. And it, it goes along with this, probably the same verse. It says a prophet has no honor in his hometown. Meaning because if you follow me, your dad may not like it. Or your mom or your sister may not may like, like it. it. Mm -hmm. But if you're not going to follow me, if you're going to deny me before them, you know, I'm going to deny you. Mm -hmm. So, and then right after that, he goes, you have to pick up your cross daily. You have to pray daily. You have to meditate on me daily. Because like you said, divine, apart from me, if you try to walk my life without me, you're not going to make it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then when you do start walking with Christ, it, it's going to cause division. And it's not actually a... In 36 there, and a man's enemies will be the members of his household, not actually an enemy trying to kill you or destroy you, but they'll probably look down on you. Or here comes the holy roller, you know, enemy like that, being persecuted like that. But enemy overseas somewhere could actually be translated as an enemy. Because people over there, they, they are martyrs over there. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that th I agree with all that. And what I was and so like the people will be turned off by that because it's like, how can I possibly do that? Like, there's no way I can meet that standard. I, I, 
I'm, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that, I'm, I'm still going to worry about my things, and I can't turn all of my attention to you, Jesus. Like, I, I just physically can't do that. And, he and says, I would say, I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and so, that's what I'm saying. He would look and say, I know. I mean, that's I, that's exactly why. I'm, so it's like, you got to give the, if you don't know the, you agree with this statement, if you don't know bad, you can't know good. Or if you, I mean, do you know, is that, you know what I'm trying to say? I, I, I've never heard that statement, but I, I get what you're trying like, to say. Yeah, yeah, like, I'm just trying to say, like, dude, could we know of all of God's goodness if we didn't know of sin, I guess? Like, if sin wasn't even a thing, could we still know of God's goodness? I think yes. What, like Without knowing anything of the Bible? With that, I, yeah, just a general statement, like, just with I anything. I would say yes, because I can't think of the verse, but I can look it up so we can back it up. Yeah, I, I know, I'm <laughs> guaranteeing you can. Um, <laughs> um, so it's like... Because you have it, to it, get my point is this and i'll let you finish mike but i think like what i'm trying to say is jesus is coming at you with i'm coming like a sword dividing even households and we're saying well i can't do that i mean i'm, I'm not even going to set myself up for failure i'm going to fail doing that and then he steps in and says i know you can't i'm here to redeem you to restore you to what you're supposed to be so i can change the desires of your heart and get you through the perseverance of things you can never do on your own so then my question was that, like, can you know the good without the bad? Like, can I know that if he didn't tell me all that stuff he was coming to do, divide and conquer and do all these things, and, and he just only stepped in and said, I can do things in your life that are uh, impossible, that you can't do on your own, would it have as much as an impact on me if I didn't know what the impossible was? I was reading and listening at the same time, but the beginning of That's a deep question. question. <laughs> The yeah, beginning the of big the bucks, question, man. I don't, I don't, I'm not asking small questions, okay? <laughs> I mean, after last Sunday, he has set the bar high. Oh, yeah, he, he, yeah, he's got, he's got a, he has to. <laughs> I listen to a lot bar. of podcasts. That's all it is, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, to know bad and good, I'm going to say yes, we would know good without actually, I'm going to say having an encounter with God. Mm hmm. Because, and I'm reading out of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, the verse I want to get to is, is uh, verse 3, but I'm going to read all of it. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, it says, we, Are we beginning to commend ourselves again, or do we need, like some, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You yourselves are our letter, meaning the way they're acting because they have heard the gospel written on our hearts, recognized and read by everyone. Again, it probably goes back to a tree is recognized by its fruit. So in verse 3, it is clear that you are Christ's letter produced by us, not written with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on stone tablets, but on tablets that are hearts of flesh. Because... And there's another verse I'm going to look up to go with it is it says there'll be a day because all God's laws are written on man's heart. So you can't know, again, if we go back and I've said it before, a three-year-old walks into the kitchen and say grabs a cookie and comes back into the living room and it's got it hid. Well, why is he hiding it? Because he knows he shouldn't have it, right? right. Well, how does he know that? Because it's written on his heart. He knows that he's not supposed to get it unless he asks for it. Mm -hmm. So, and I've been doing a little bit of reading on that is because then you get into the whole thing. Well, why do you know it's bad? Well, if it's anything that goes against God's moral law, in a nutshell, the Ten Commandments, and there's more commandments, but the Ten, uh, he said, if you go against that, it, it's not right. Mm -hmm. And it, he's not, it's not bad, it's sin. So he doesn't call it good or bad, but he says, you know, follow me, for I am good. Mm -hmm. And he said, it's well, what if I've never heard of it? He says, you're without excuse because I've written it on every person's heart. Mm -hmm. So there'll be times when say a, a person is sneaking into somebody's house 
at night. Well, why is he sneaking in there at night? Because if you do it during the day, you're going to get caught. Because <laughs> he knows it's wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so I think God, knowing all of that, I think that is part of, as we're trying to just be regular dudes that are out there trying to live life that honors God, like it impacts people. That is part of the struggle, though, because when you start explaining or even trying to talk about God's moral law and and how to uphold it and to respect it, man, people immediately see fun things taken away. <laughs> you know, they see like, I can't go do, go do this. I can't go do that. Um, I don't know. It's just like you see all the stuff you lose. And I, and I wish there was a way to... Um, I know that I know I can live my life in a certain way. I know every chance I get to speak um, is a blessing. I know those type of things, but I wish there was like a easier way to get people to see the goodness. Um, also, with the challenge of being a disciple and and living for God, like that's that's it. Like there is a, it's hard to do, and and like it's it's not easy to do. But the payoff, the benefits, the blessings, not what you do them for, but are definitely a. Thing that happens because of a humble and obedient life um, are so much better than, than all that stuff you think you're losing. And E-Man, for sure, like when you're dealing with um, t- mid to late 20-year-olds, wouldn't you think that you would feel like you're missing out on a lot <laughs> if you tried to like go all of a sudden <laughs> uphold God's moral law? I mean, just based on what you see, I mean, in the world. Oh, yeah. Um, I think that that's, <laughs> that's the main, I guess, problem that I guess a younger people my generation for say have when it comes to I guess I'll just put it the way it's said the church going mm-hmm. the environment is like oh I'm gonna miss out on you name it. I mean we can go with simple practical thing. I'll miss out on a basketball game that all my friends are going to I'll miss out on a Friday night party or a Saturday event if I go to, to this instead of this, uh, as opposed to going to church or anything like that. And that, I think that's just a battle that uh, you got to realize that, yeah, you'll miss that small bit of enjoyment, but it, like Mike said, oftentimes <laughs> it's great. Is that it's great. <laughs> eternal in your eternity and in my book i think no now it takes time <laughs> your, you, your internet is it going in now <laughs> oh man it's I'm, great I'm, we, i'm we, going to assume you heard none of it <laughs> we heard a, a, a good bit but then right oh, there, we heard right. it good and, and then it slowed down okay. about 25 and now and you're just head back <laughs> and now you you you're on time now but yeah you're off for a minute so i think yeah, yeah i i pop for our listeners in advance. Russell's program is there. Oh, he's gone. Who, me? No, I'm. No, I'm he's man. Oh, yeah. I kicked him out. <laughs> I just kicked him out. Like, he's got to come back in and start. He's got to start afresh. He's got to come back and start it for he'll get back. Anyway, while he's doing that, I found he'll the other verse back. I was looking for the first time. Okay, go ahead. It's uh, Jeremiah 31. And I'm just going to read several of the verses starting in chapter 31, verse 31. It says, look, the days are coming. This is the Lord's declaration when I will make a new covenant for the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. This one will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant they broke even though I had married them, which is true. They broke it, not God. The Lord's declaration. Instead, this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days. The Lord's declaration. I will put my teaching within them and write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer would one teach his neighbor or his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they will all know me, from the least to the greatest of them. This is the Lord's declaration, for I will forgive their wrongdoing and never again remember their sin. Mm -hmm. 
So that's the verse I was looking for to begin with, but it's written on everybody's heart. So nobody's without excuse. That's right. And that's like with anything in life, when someone reminds you of something that you already know, um, you don't want to hear it. <laughs> like, you're like, I already know that. I mean, duh, I don't, I don't want to do it. Like, we're just, we're, at some degree, every person is a little bit selfish and just a little bit um, self-absorbed, obviously. I know I am for a fact. Like, there's just certain things that I do or don't do strictly because of the feeling it gives me or doesn't give me. That's a... That's a fact, you know, and like Jesus is pushing us all the time to get over that to where I will serve people or uh, do things for people or, you know, maybe not even for someone just in general and not look for anything in return. Jesus is constantly pushing us to that. And it's such a hard thing because you can so easily get sucked into the world and someone can just call you randomly on the telephone and start talking about all these negative things or things that contradict what I firmly believe in. You know, I've never doubted God or never like said like, oh, you know, maybe that's not true. But man, there's some things where people will just, well, why does this happen? And why is that? And why? And you're like, you know, I, faith is a lot of the answers I have. Like, I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, scripture clearly says that we will not understand until it's time for us to understand. And uh, God's ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And so as we sit there and try to ponder them and think about them, uh, yeah, we're going to become frustrated. And yeah, it's going to seem insurmountable and yet it's going to seem like yeah it doesn't make sense duh i mean god created it it's, it, it's not meant to make sense to us and so um it's just an interesting the call to be a disciple i guess this is the direction we're going and it wasn't really what we, i was trying to do but it's what i'm preaching on sunday but it is really the that is the task and that is what we're all doing it's trying to live up to that call to be a disciple and even the disciples struggled with it with Jesus was right there with them walking every day. I mean, physically with them and mm -hmm. they still struggled. And so like, what do you mean? I don't understand this or I don't understand that. And here we are many, many years later with lives as examples and things. And so it just gets convoluted and the world gets out of control. And so that's why I just stick to what the basics of what the scriptures say and try to keep and be the person that Jesus wants me to be and everything else. I'm just trusting that it is what God says it is, <laughs> you know, and other than that, I, I have no control over it. So uh, the yeah. scripture, you know, that scripture that says what man or woman can add an hour to their life by worrying, uh, none. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, what, I'm wasting my time with that. Yeah, when I was doing some reading last week, uh, I actually been talking a lot about and reading a lot about Satan. And, you know, the question that, comes up a lot is if if god is so great and loving why is there a hell you know a lot of people would think that i thought that and the more i studied and the more stuff i had to read and then to actually do work on it is the simple fact if there was no punishment then god would not be a just god mm. because it the, the person I was listening to talk about it, the lecture said, hell is like an extension of God himself mm -hmm. because he's a loving God, but he's also a just God. So he can't, like you said earlier, being the leader, sometimes your, your decisions are not going to make the group happy. Mm -hmm. But is that decision best for the group or the person? Yes, you would hope you'd make him the right decision. So it's like, and they're like, well, why would God send people to hell? It's like, well, he don't. <laughs> he doesn't send them. It's like, now he made it for Satan and his angels. That is biblical. It is written down. I think it's in Matthew. Mm -hmm. He said he was not, man was never meant, humanity was never meant to go there. Just lucifer his given name his birth name uh and his group goonies that followed him and it said so if he if justice was never served he would not be a true god mm -hmm. yeah i was like that makes sense yeah that's a <laughs> lot of sense for sure um so yeah it's just an interesting uh thing in leadership i, I bet i think it's like the um 
when you're leaving your kids too, you all, you, at least my parents would always say stuff to me like, I don't know if they ever said these words, but it's like what you, it's like a phrase that people would, you think they would say like, uh, this hurts me more than it hurts you. I don't know that my parents have ever said that to me, but I can get the feeling behind that. Um, as a parent, as a leader, as a pastor, as anything, um, like Sunday, for instance, um, it may have came across as I'm telling you all these things like you're not doing, you should be doing all this stuff, but it's, it's for your good, it's for my good, it's for the edification of the whole body. Um, I'm just in that position, and yeah, in the moment it feels not great, but like you said, if it's for the good of the team, then, you know, I'll stand up there and do it every week if that's what God calls me to do. I, I pray that he doesn't call me every week, <laughs> week to do that, but if he, <laughs> but if he did, um, I would be willing to, to do whatever he wants me to do. So, um, yeah, it's just good stuff. I mean, it, one of those moments where you don't really know um, how it was going to be accepted or what, like I said, and God was already working before I even stepped up on the stage, preparing people's hearts and experiences and even my own to where when it all came out, I mean, I didn't know what was coming out, but when it all came out, um, God was glorified and people were, um, were, were touched by the Spirit. So that, that's the point. I mean, that's my whole point. So yeah. I, was, I was excited about that. So uh, we asked last week for you guys to send us some comments and thoughts about Mike's question. What does it mean to be a friend of God or a child of God in one of our faithful followers uh, sent us a response back. And so, Mike, you have that in front of you? I do. Yep. I so, do. so <clears throat> This was actually, and he doesn't mind, it's from David. Mm -hmm. So, good job, David. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, we're going to, and he picked out Romans 8, uh, verses 12 to 17. It says, so then, now he, he picked out the ESV version, and I'm going to read out of my Holman Bible. It says, so then, brothers, we are not obligated to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if you, but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. All those led by God's spirit are God's sons. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. And if children, also heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, seeing that we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. So when you accept Christ, you become a child of God. So I thought that was really good. Good job, David. And there's a lot of benefits that come along with being a child of God too. Like <laughs> this goes along with that. So understanding. Said, you know, and then, and also it says God considered Moses his friend. Uh, Jesus told his disciples, he goes, you, I call you my friends mm -hmm. instead of just servants because a servant doesn't know his master's business. Mm -hmm. So I call you friends because you do know what I'm doing. So it just all through the Bible, it's, I think children is used more widely than friendship. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just, like I said, I heard a song and it, I was like the difference between a child of God and a friend of God. Mm -hmm. So, so and basically David, David, David picked it out and he said, if you get saved, uh, you're you're one of God's son because you are adopted into His family. Mm -hmm. I love it. Great answer. Yeah. So we ask and we shall receive. Eman is texting me. He's trying to get back in there. Uh, it it's not working. So we might have lost Eman for the night. I told him we'll try again next week. Um, yeah. As the as the internet struggles continue. Can I hit the showers and take a <laughs> <laughs> So uh, coming up on um, Good Friday and Easter coming up rather rapidly on us. And so um, getting excited about that and um, in a weird way. I mean, how do you get excited about Jesus dying on a cross? But it sounds weird to say I am excited about it because it was because of that that we're saved and redeemed. Well, you but read it. just the actual you read it probably two weeks ago. It's like your joy will 
will become uh, yeah. your mourning will become <laughs> joy. joy. That's right. Your joy will turn. Your sorrow will turn to joy. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah. So we've been planning that and, and getting thinking through that. And I'm really happy about the way that's turning out. And we've been praying that someone is impacted through the Good Friday service that we're going to do this year. That someone understands the sacrifice and the gospel for the first time. And I just, I, um, I think it'll be cool to to come back on, come on that Friday, and remember the death and to. Do all that, and then to come back and celebrate it on that Sunday morning. Um, it's just a, I mean, people have been doing that, obviously, Dub, but we've never done it, and so I think it's a cool thing. Um, so hopefully, people will catch on to that. So if you're listening and you can make it to Mount Zion on Good Friday, come join us six thirty. Be an um, awesome time of worship. So God is, God is really working. I don't know. You've been out for um, a few weeks doing some family things, and so, uh, but there's just people that God is using and doing things in their lives and so it's been really cool to witness and see um here in the church outside the church there's other conversations i've had with people but i'm also seeing also man there are a lot of people that you know i was saying a couple of weeks back how us in the west we don't face persecution a lot as far as people coming in and saying you can't say the name of jesus and you can't pray in this school and you can't do that I don't typically face that. Uh, when I go to the schools, it's pretty open um, because of FCA. When we're here, we worship freely. But I have been noticing lately um, persecution. I don't know if that's even the right word. But things people are going through at the hands of other people, um, and it's it's pretty strong. Like, there's just things happening in people's lives. And it's like, man, um, humanity is so so depraved and just so messed up that you would treat your fellow person <laughs> the some of these people are, are like like believers also and so it's just satan gets in and starts whispering things to you and things happen and, and so that's been really on my heart lately is to and that, i think i don't know in the world or just in general with all the good things we see going on with like the revivals going on here and there and there's several other colleges that have been trying to catch on to what was going on in um was it kentucky and asbury all these other places have been trying to I don't know if they're trying to recreate the same thing, but they are just trying to spark something in their little town or community. And so you see all these good things happening. And then you also hear of these people that are being um, spiritually attacked. And it's like, man, there's constant the stuff we talked about in Daniel where there's constantly a spiritual battle going on that we don't battle flesh and blood, that, blood, that we battle principalities and all these things. Um, it's so true. And when you see it happening, it's like you really see it and you... It kind of, um, I guess, it points to what I was going to read tonight. Um, unless you got something to say about that before I actually read the scripture. Uh, I have one picked out. Then I was working on a second one to go along with it. And why do, why does humanity do that to each other? Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> you found uh, one that speaks to that. The heart is more deceitful than anything else and incurable. Who can understand it? I, Yahweh, examine the mind. I test the heart to give to each according his way, according to what his actions deserve. Mm -hmm. And that's Jeremiah 17, 9. And then I know it's in James 4. I just don't know what verse. Oh, here it is. James 4, 1. It <laughs> says, what is the source of wars and fights among you? What you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. Don't they come from the cravings that are war within you? You desire and do not have. You murder and covet. Covet is steal. Mm -hmm. And cannot obtain, you fight in war, you do not have because you do not ask. You ask, and, and people are like, well, I do ask. You ask and don't receive because you ask with the wrong motives so that you may spend it on your evil desires. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, and I'm guilty of it, an unbelieving person, when they pray, it's usually a selfish prayer. Now, that's not saying that you can't pray for yourself, but it says you ask and don't receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your evil desires. 
So let's just take the generic one, money. It's like, why, I'm not, why am I not getting this money? Because when if I give you the money, what are you going to do with it? You're going to spend it on yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, if you get that new pickup truck, you know, what are you going to do with it? You're not going to deliver food with it. You're going to do what you want to do with it. So it's it's like that. So it's not it's not a sin to pray for yourself for your health and your well being and give me knowledge to do what you want me to do. Mm -hmm. He goes back to when Christ, Jesus was telling them, uh, ask, you know, ask and you shall receive, seek, and you'll find it, knock and the door will be open. Anything you ask in my name, you will receive according to my will. Mm -hmm. They leave that little part out. So <laughs> Yeah, that's, because that's like, you, like you said, if you pray for uh, a million bucks, and you're like, I never got a million bucks. I've tried the prayer, like, God, if you'll give me a like, million bucks, I promise I'll give, like, more than 10% to the church. I've tried that prayer before. It, it doesn't work. <laughs> he doesn't care it, about it. hadn't showed up yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> so even if you try that trickery, uh, what, what God doesn't. What if you said about 12.5%? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'll jack it up, God. I'll take it a little bit. <laughs> I mean, God is negotiating on how much I'm going to tithe <laughs> off of my lottery winnings. He does but, say, hey, come and talk with me. Let's reason together. Let's yeah. Let's see if we can work this out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. Uh, so... Uh, and so the, all of that goes into why the topic for tonight, um, prayer. The, scri the scripture for tonight, prayer. prayer. Yeah, it all goes together because with, with with preparing for a sermon, I do a lot of praying. Like I, I don't know that I necessarily sit in one spot and I'm like laid out praying, God, what am I supposed to talk about? And now I may do that more. Maybe not the physical laying out. I know scripture says to do that, and you should do that. I, I've done it once in my life, um, so I'm not a common practicer of that. But I do pray a lot when I'm starting sermon series and trying to get all that out, so I do that. I pray a lot during the week when I'm trying to write sermons and say, God, what are you trying to say to us through this scripture? I know it's true. And so prayer is, is, is huge, and it, it plays a role in all these things. And and we have this open line of communication to God. And so Jesus, as he has been doing through this whole book of John, is now going to put into practice something that when things are about to get rough, like I'm really about to have to do, God, what you sent me here to do, um, he goes to prayer. And it says in John chapter 17, Jesus spoke these words. Remember, he ended last time saying, I have overcome the world. Like, um, there are going to be trials and you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. So it may seem tough now, but it's not going to forever be that way. That's right after that, Jesus spoke these words. He lifted up his eyes to heaven and he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may also glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life to you, uh, excuse me, to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I plead you with you before the world was. And so he goes on to, that was him praying for himself. He goes on to pray for his disciples that, um says he's manifested your name to the men who you gave me and sent them out into the world they were yours and you gave them to me uh, they have kept your word and now they know all the things in which you have given me to teach them and for i have given them the words which you have given me jesus said and they have actually received them and have sure and have known surely that i came from you and they have believed that you sent me and so jesus said i pray for them i don't pray for the world but for those whom you've given me for they are yours. And so Jesus is crying out to the Father. Then he cries out to uh, God on behalf of all believers. So first himself, then disciples. And, and then he cries out for believers. And he says, I do not pray for, this is verse 20. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, um, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, and they may be one just as we are one. And that's what we're trying to do, I guess, with the with our whole relationship with God is to be one with Jesus, is to be um, the 
reflection, to be the image bearers, to be the when people interact with us that they see Christ. And this is the prayer that he prayed for us because he knew that there was very shortly about to be a time when he wasn't going to be with us, but he knew the power of prayer. And throughout this whole prayer, you see uh, humility, you see compassion, you see care, kindness, gentleness, all these things, because he says, everything that I've told them, everything that you've told me, I've shared with them and they've accepted it. And so be with them. And um, just a really powerful thing, because then it, you know, scripture also says that and Jesus ascended to the Father and now sits at the right hand of God, interceding on our behalf. Um, he's praying like this for us all the time. And so it's kind of, it's just powerful knowing that the Savior of the world um, had, had you and I in our heart as he was about to go and be beaten and ridiculed and mocked and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and eventually crucified. So. And I, when you were reading that, I remember when I went through this chapter with the class, I said something interesting to me is when Jesus prayed for himself, it was five verses. When he prayed for the disciples, it was 13 verses. And then when he prayed for us, the future, it was only six verses. Mm -hmm. So he prayed more for his disciples then because they were, they were going to have a pretty rough time. Yeah. <laughs> So there again, it's not bad to pray for yourself. But he was he was praying. It's like, look, this ain't gonna be fun, but you want me to do it, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, I prayed that prayer a lot too. And um, as you were saying, he praying for these disciples because the scripture that we'll go over this weekend. I don't know when you're listening to this, but is out of Luke chapter nine, and it. Um, I'm paraphrasing because I don't have that Luke right in front of me. I have John, but it says like, um, I'm giving you all power and authority to cast out demons and to go do all these things in my name. And I just always find it interesting how Jesus is talking to, yeah, those 12 disciples, but those 12 disciples were tasked with going and making more disciples and, and, and more disciples and more disciples. And now here we are as um, disciples way down the line, through the same gospel, through the same teachings. And so he's saying the same thing to us. I've sent you out there with all power and all, to all authority. And when we fully gr grab that and hold on to it, and like really you take that when you go to these jobs, all power and authority, you don't care about what those people in there think about what you're doing or you, if they yeah. believe what you're saying. You don't care. You know the truth, and here it is. I don't mm -hmm. care when I stand up on Sunday if you believe what I'm saying or not. I know it's a fact, and I'm going to bring it to you with all power and all authority, and that it, I do not make that a practice in every aspect of my life. I mean, that's just a fact. And if I did, I would be different. Things would be different. Um, and so that's a challenge for all of us, to, to understand that that same power and same authority he's given us, and are we living our life accordingly? It, it's the same spirit when mm. Pentecost showed up that we have now. Mm. I'm going to read Luke 9 because I, I flipped over to it and I was mm -hmm. like, hey, that's got that verse I like in it. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to read it. Uh, Luke 9, starting with verse 1, summoning the 12, he gave them power and authority over all the demons and power to heal diseases. Then he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Take nothing for the road, he told them. No walking stick, no traveling bag, no bread, no money, and don't take an extra shirt. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. If they do not welcome you when you leave that town, shake off the dust from your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and traveled from village to village proclaiming the good news. What? Good news and healing everyone. He said, hey, if they don't want it, hit the, hit the road and go down to the next <laughs> town. Maybe they'll take it. Jesus was serious about um, <clears throat> not casting, the, the scripture would say what, like pearls before swine. Is that actually in the scripture? Have I just heard that yeah. so much? I think it is, yeah. right? Um, yeah, he was serious about if people aren't going to listen, then don't, don't, I mean, invest in them, love them, care for them, all that, introduce them. You can't them. make them take it. Can't, you can't yeah. make them be something they're not. Absolutely. And only he can. And so if we will introduce them, and I love that too, because 
in that scripture you just read, that's one of the ones I'm reading on Sunday. I love that he says, if they don't take you in, dust their feet off and move on. Um, but he says, mm-hmm. if they do take you in, like, hang out, do all these things. Um, don't you love the fact that he says, like, when you go there, don't take an uh, extra shirt, don't take uh, food, don't take this, don't take that. I mean, he wanted those people to see that God he basically was... said, get up right now and go. <laughs> yeah, he, and he wanted to show that God was the only thing providing, was providing absolutely everything they needed. Like there was nothing else. Like so, that was kind of cool. Um, and we'll talk about that Sunday. But yeah, so it's really it's gonna be a good uh, time together Sunday. I like that. I like that part in scripture too, um, how he sends them out because it kind of frees you up too. Because doesn't he say there towards the end of that, like maybe one through six, eight, nine, somewhere around there, when he does say that, like dust your feet off and go. It's kind of like their salvation's not on me. Like, I, it's it's not on me to make sure they're all saved. I'm I'm to go and be obedient and to share everything I can share. And if they don't take it, then Jesus has given me the power to instill that same power and authority. <laughs> so I can go into that and say, you know what, I'm out of here, uh, and not feel guilty about it. I think sometimes we try to keep going back to the same people we've went to or the same groups or same whatever. And preaching the message and getting frustrated when they don't respond and jesus is saying that it's not on you like you there is a scripture yeah. i know that says like people people's blood are on your hands like if you don't share the gospel with them i don't know where that's at it's somewhere in the scriptures i've read it um cool. i think that's speaking more to like if you don't even make an effort like if you don't love them like jesus would love them if you don't pray for your enemies pray for your neighbors if you're making the effort and people just aren't responding then jesus right there said just move on. The message is for everyone, and all can accept. If they choose not to, it's not on you. I'm looking for you to be obedient. And it says in the commentary on Luke 9, it says, the apostles were to be dependent on whom they lodged with, in the sense of take nothing, and were to move on if a family or town, whoa, a family or a town, mm-hmm. did not welcome them. Shake off the dust from your <clears throat> feet was a gesture of judgment against those who rejected the apostles and their message about Jesus. Mm. And then the pearls before the swine is in Matthew 6. Uh, Matthew 6, 6. No, Matthew 7, 6. Uh, don't give what is holy to dogs or toss your pearls before pigs, mm-hmm. for they will trample them with their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Mm-hmm. Basically, you can't make a pig be anything but a pig. It's like you don't argue with the crazy person. Like you're never going to make them, <laughs> your, your logical argument is never going to make someone that's off, that's not, that's illogical um, mm-hmm. have a rational I argument with you. It. Yeah. So. Because yeah. really, it's it's all the spirits doing to make. Just for example, when Jesus was resurrected and he's walking with the two guys from the what the the Emas Road or, mm-hmm. or whatever mm-hmm. that road was, and they and Jesus like, man, what's going on, guys? He goes, where have you been? <laughs> have you not realized what just happened here? Mm-hmm. And they're like camping out and eating together, and you know, and he said, all of a sudden, he goes. He opened their eyes. And the two guys were like, were our souls not burning within us? How did we not know that? Mm-hmm. So it's, it, it's really, we just tell them, and then the spirit takes over from there. It's kind of, I guess that's kind of the, I like how God has kind of guided this conversation. It's kind of like what we started with, like the the good and the bad. Like my message was, it seemed to me, it's coming across as aggressive or I didn't like being in that mode, but the whole time the spirit was, was pushing people to conviction and and these are ways in my life that I can get tighter with God and closer to God and things and the whole time the spirit is the one that's that's working all that we're just like the instruments moving through it and then Jesus here gives us like a way to okay so we preach that message we continued this week to I say we but I preach that message I continue this week to keep following and doing what he's told me to do and like plan things and do stuff and not think about that like the way it made me feel in that moment and god has used it for good and then he has taken us to this place where jesus is showing us how to pray for believers and to to do all these things and uh i don't know it's it's all been 
for me, it's been growth um, in just like a short week. That's how quickly you can see this growth. Mm-hmm. And, and for God to open, like to what you were just saying, he opened their eyes and that's it. Like we, we see the good. You got to tell people the hard so they can see like it's not possible with you, but you can do it with Jesus. And then when, they, when he opens their eyes, like when he opened your eyes and he opened my eyes, it's that feeling, it's that moment that we're trying to not replicate because we, we experience it all the time now. God's got our eyes open. We see him everywhere. We, we know he's working and moving. But it's that moment that we try to uh, get someone else to experience because if they can just mm-hmm. catch that glimpse of God, if he can open their eyes to let them see everything that they thought was out of control, he was working it to perfect precision, and now look where it worked out for your good because he loves you and he's a kind, compassionate, caring God and you didn't even acknowledge him through the whole process, yeah, you should probably surrender your life to that. And that's, what, that's, that's our motivation, right? That's what we mm-hmm. strive to do. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think that's a good uh, wrapping up point, Mikey Mike. Uh, we got to get E-Man. I don't know what we got to do. We tried the Wi-Fi extender. This he time might we'll... need to come hang out in the office with you. <laughs> he might, yeah. He can sit in the conference room, and I can, uh, I'll can. i sit in the office, and we can all be on this Wi-Fi. We know it's good. But, uh, yeah, man, so e- e- invite, if you're listening, we would love to have you for our Good Friday service, for our Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday, lovely time of year. Um, many people are more open to the gospel during this time of year, and when they, when they start hearing the truth of why we celebrate these things. And so you're invited. It would, it, it would probably be the best time that you would be glad somebody died. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt, yeah. That it'll was be, not sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. And so it'll, it'll be a good time to worship and remember. And so we appreciate all the support, David, and everyone else. Keep with the comments. I got some comments from, from some other people thanking us for their baby shower and baby shout out the other day. And so people are listening, man. Um, we're trusting that the Holy Spirit and the gospel are moving in people's hearts and, and leading them towards righteousness and holiness. And so if the podcast uh, can do that in a small percentage, we're very thankful. And so... Appreciate all the support. Like, subscribe, share with your friends, and me and Mike will catch up with you next week, hopefully with E-Man.